Sometimes we have events at uh, Premier, at Fiesta, members of the media. Uh, today we are celebrating World Amateur Radio Day. My name is Larry. I'm a member of the Angola Amateur Radio Society. My call sign is Victor Parker 2 Echo Lima. And I'd uh, like to welcome everyone. Uh, today we are celebrating World Amateur Radio Day. In 1925 in Paris, the International Amateur Radio Union formed um, and from since that day on April 18th, we have been celebrating World Amateur Radio Day. I'll hand over to our club president, uh, Mr. Pete Soulgraves, call sign Victor Papa 2 Echo Kilo Golf, to welcome everyone and um, introduce today's session. Thank you so much, Larry. Echo Lima. We want to thank uh, members of the media, the Honorable Premier, uh, for coming. We're still expecting Her Excellency and the Minister of Comms and Work to be with us here today. As Larry indicated, it's World Amateur Radio Day, and every day on this particular date, hams around the world get together to do just as we are doing here, share information, to have activities on the air, and just to communicate and promote our great hobby, amateur radio. So we are delighted that members of the media, uh, you've taken time out of your very busy schedules on a Sunday morning to be here with us today. So we don't take that lightly. We are indeed very happy also to the Honorable Premier for taking time out of his busy schedule to be with us. And other members of the public as well um, who joined us here for this activity. What we'll be doing um, initially is to share some information um, with you and then we'll do a demonstration a little later on. So, just to bring you up to speed with what we have. In Anguilla, we have the Anguilla Amateur Radio Society. The society has been around since 1991, when it was officially founded. Larry is one of the founding members, along with Dorothy and Mann, um, and a couple of other individuals who were involved from the start. Amateur radio has been in Anguilla since the 70s, Quincy, the Kiko Echo Quebec Hotel has been there. Our headquarters has been the Scouts and Guides building and the room downstairs that we've been using all along. So since the 70s, we've had radio amateur activity here in Anguilla. The Amateur Radio Society was founded though, officially in 1991. That's when the society, and we've been functioning ever since. On the books, we have over 100 registered, licensed amateur radio operators in Anguilla. But I have to tell you that active hams, we have about 20. Over the last 10 years or so, we've trained close to upwards of close to 40 persons, but many of them are not active. They have a license, but they're not active amateurs. So in terms of active amateur operators, we have roughly about 20. In fact, we just have a cohort of about eight who have been going through some training sessions for the last three months, and we're just about getting ready to join, uh, get take them into their exams. I should add that we also have a visiting ham with us. Uh, Howard Rosen, his oh. call, he has an Anguilla call, he's from Canada. Victor Papa 2 Echo Echo is his call, he's here with us as well. So we're certainly happy to, to have him. Again, just showing the body of friendship and how we as amateur radio operators um, do it. Um, we're in the process of getting a new clubhouse I can announce here today that the government of Anguilla has just, as of last week, granted us permission to use the old section of the former police station, the old police station next to the Chamber of Commerce building. That building, you see, has been dilapidated, run down, so they've granted us permission to utilize the facility and in the process of going through the government plans and getting back. So that will become um, our home. Um, going forward, so that's very good news. We are also in discussion currently with the government of Anguilla as relates to duty-free concession for radio amateur operators in Anguilla. Radio amateur radio gear is extremely expensive, and we've made a case, a business case to the government to allow certain con uh, concessionary rates for the equipment that we bring in. We, of course, play a vital role in hurricane and other emergencies. We are always there, in fact, we have our MOU, Memorandum of Understanding with the Department of Disaster Management where once the, the EOC which we are in now is activated, the hams will come in and operate the equipment there. So we have that agreement going. 
Um, those are about the major things that we have, apart from our training, which we provide free of charge to any person or persons in the community who has an interest in amateur radio. Worldwide, amateur radio, the numbers, we have over 3 million amateur radio operators worldwide. And as I said in previous interviews, that we have what we call ham radio tourism, where hams would travel all over the world. COVID has put, uh, sort of pushed that back a bit, but hams have been traveling all over the world, and they provide a vital amount of capital to the economies. Because when they come, hams come on a uh, hamcation, as we call it. They spend at least three week, uh, two weeks to three weeks, and they pump a lot of money into the economies. And countries around the world have been benefiting from hams, who just travel to remote islands just to operate an ham. All right, that being said, we are delighted that you've come here today. We just wanted to show the Anguillan community that we do exist. We want to show also to the government of Anguilla that amateur radio is a vital um, tool in its armory in the event of any disaster or emergency situations. Because the truth be told that when the telecom platforms go down, and they do go down, that the radio amateur with a piece of wire, a car battery, or any 12 volt um, battery can still provide communication to the outside world. It's, uh, it's been done, it's, it's, it's proven itself time and time again. That, when all else fails, you can rely on a trained radio amateur operator to get a message out to the rest of the world to say, look, we need help, could you come and help us? So our fraternity is a great one and we just want to highlight this to not only the government, but to the people of Anguilla that they have a vital service that they can rely on. And we just want to be part of our community. Our thing is really service, service, service. So with that, we'll invite you to ask any questions that you may have. We have a number of hands here, and we'll try our very best to entertain any questions you may have. This is an information sharing session that we think is vitally important for the general public. So any questions you have, you're you free to ask us. Uh, Keith. Uh, I, I see that okay. Go ahead. you just have um, an HF. Yeah, this is one. This is an HF radio. This is another HF radio. And then you have the VHF. VHF radios. So in terms of the, the series of Hurricane, how do you function with just one? Well, all you need is basically one, but okay. you can switch bands. You can go to different bands. You have different bands that you can go to. Because it all depends on the propagation. Um, the time of day, we sit through different bands. So different bands work better at certain times, all depending on the atmospheric conditions and propagation. So, but one radio is, is, is sufficient. We can just go to the different bands. But this is only at EOC. Yeah. That does not uh, rule out the fact that Keith has his radio at home, mm -hmm. I have my radio at home, and so forth. So we also form a link uh, with each other. And that's primarily what's happening now in St. Vincent as well with you. Volcanic activity. Uh, there are ham radio operators in various parts of the island who will be providing information, and that's what Ira is doing now. He's, he's been running the net at uh, 7 decimal 188, so we're able to hear what's going on in St. Vincent and actually transferring information from one place to the other, reporting what he's getting from disaster from Sedema as well as from Nemo, what's happening uh, officially uh, with reference to the. Uh, Volcano, that's information that he's passing on to the amateur radio. Um, I, we were talking earlier. Um, we talk about CB and um, ham. What is the difference for the public, please? Okay, let me turn yeah. that to Quincy. And Howard, and Howard we'll yes. yes. That. I'll, some I'll probably go to Howard first since he's going to look at a very technical aspect, you know. And then we'll okay. Well, Citizens Band, or, or CB as you probably uh, know it, uh, is an unlicensed hobby whereby you buy a radio and you use it. Um, amateur radio is um, not really what the name denotes. We are actually more professional than amateur in the way that we implement the use of radio. And we're all trained in the art of using radio and repairing radio and uh, as well understanding the true intricacies of radio and what this does 
is it allows us um, during any type of uh, perhaps disaster or uh, any um, method to a solution of communicating outside of our uh, our boundaries so that we could perhaps use amateur radio for emergency purposes. There are many bands, many frequencies or wavelengths as you might call it, similar to frequencies on your AM or FM radio where we're able to communicate during all hours of the day and night and, and basically produce results if there were an emergency. Uh, when there is no disaster, then we're all avidly um, uh, uh, propelled or compelled to use this as a hobby where we contact other friends in other locations of the world. I'm actually here in Anguilla for that same reason that um, I've met many ham operators in Anguilla and I've been curious about the island for years and we decided to visit Anguilla three years ago and meet all of these fine friends that we've contacted on ham radio. So I, I guess that's a, a brief summary. If anybody has any questions at any point, I'll be happy to answer the detail. So it's not um, line of sight? Uh, ham radio is not necessarily line of sight. It can be. And, and uh, that's a, a fuzzy question because uh, there are different wavelengths, as I mentioned, and some are used for point-to-point, uh, -point line of sight, non-over-the-horizon communication, whereas there are other wavelengths where we bounce signals 250 miles up above the planet uh, on a layer of gases known as the ionosphere. And, and these, um, the ionosphere acts like a, a mirror to radio waves and can bounce a signal you know, thousands of miles, tens of thousands of miles uh, from the transmitter location so that we could communicate all over the world. And I do this on a regular basis from my home in Canada and similarly from uh, the location where we're uh, residing right now on the island. Okay, okay, Quincy? And hands yeah. have been known to bounce signals, we bounce signals to the moon yeah. and back, moon bounce. Yeah. So that and is, that is our business. Added right. to that as well, uh, Locally, many of the ham radio operators find themselves using the VHF uh, as their way of communication, which is limited in terms of the distance that you can go. Uh, we do have a repeater that's located on the tower of uh, Devlin Wireless uh, at Crocus Hill, and that gives us the opportunity to go a little far, but then if we just go line of sight uh, with a simplex frequency. But if you really want to get into the depth of uh, amateur radio, you really have to go on the HF. And that is the big rig there that will take you onto 40 meters, 80 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and so forth. And you are able to really uh, speak to persons all over the world, provided you have the power. And what happened even in St. Vincent is a good classical example as well. Uh, during one, uh, the volcanic activity with one of the eruptions, there was uh, an explosion at the power plant. Electricity went, but that did not stop transmissions from taking place with amateur radio because all the persons needed to have was an antenna, a battery, and the radio operating, and they were able to communicate with persons. When you make mention of an antenna, what type of antenna are you talking about? It depends. You can actually build your antenna, you can build a Yagi, which is out of aluminum um, pipes, or you can actually have what's called a Y antenna, which is just a dipole. I use um, number 12 14 or 14 gauge ele electrical wire. You cut it to the length that you need, and with that you run a coax cable from that antenna into your house, and you're able to broadcast with that. But it's a hobby that I've been with since 1979. Uh, 69 as a matter of fact, and I think 10 years off. I, it actually started Yeah, because when you made mention of the Marines, yeah, the, I was like 79. Yeah, 69, when the, um, the Anguilla was visited by the <laughs> paratroopers, they came with uh, amateur radio operators. The guy who actually uh, kept the police radios going, Anthony Green, he was the one who started me off as well as there was also a visitor, Rick Dorsch, who came from the United States. He stayed at that time at the hotel that was uh, at that point in time where, um, I can't even remember the name of 
Hotel. Such a long time. Yeah, it's such a long time. Camorra. No, it wasn't Cam Camorra. It was uh, down on the West End area. I think um, the owners also had a plane at that time, um, and the name won't just eluded me at this point in time. But um, he was there, and he still is a ham radio operator. We are still in communication with each other. He has been in contact with um, uh, Keith. He has been in contact with Teddy as well, who are also amateur radio operators. I'm talking of Rick Dosh. Yeah, so yeah, those are you know. So it's a hobby that you will really enjoy, and it has evolved over the years. Things have changed. When I started, it was the old Heath Kit HW100, 100 watts. And since then, people have already um, gone into bigger radios, uh, more power as well, 1,000 watts and so forth, the legal limit that you allowed in Anguilla. Uh, but most of us would operate just at what you would call barefoot, which is just 100 watts. Mm. Can I just ask a quick question? Uh, just suppose that we're interested in Because you don't actually know the more. Yes, we do. Can you contact the tellers up on district? district? Yes, 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 we can. Yes. Yes. We can yes. via, via, via the um, VHF radios. We do. Yeah. We and do. From so yes, yeah. the IS station, ISS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've in fact students all over the United States and other places talking mm -hmm. them regularly. In Anguilla as well. In Anguilla yeah. as well. Uh, so what can this program provide? That has been just outstanding. People are just so excited to know that we can, we can do that. Do you have to wait until it is long here or? Yes, yes, you, yes. yes. Once it's in our sphere, in mm -hmm. our area, you can. Yeah. And there's certain frequencies, that an uplink and a downlink frequency that you, once you know those frequencies, you can speak to them. And now with our computers yeah. hooked up to the radio, you can actually see and it tells and you when and the and space pass. station is yeah. overhead and when you can actually make that, that communication. We have used also been able to make communication with uh, pilots yeah. who on their long flights, they have amateur the radios on, their, on the plane, and you're in contact with them as well. All the time. So, so suppose you, you um, so suppose there's a plane that, uh, that has some kind of a, a, a problem on it. Mm -hmm. You can in, in, interface with that. Not necessarily because they will be on a different frequency, oh, but they, these guys who actually, who I'm talking ham about, radio have a ham radio on the, the ham itself. frequencies. Because yeah. 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 that's part of our license and permits us only to operate on the amateur radio frequencies. Mm -hmm. You see, the whole spectrum that's provided by the International Communication Union is a spectrum, and each each um, each of us ham radio has its own. The ear band aircraft they have it. The boaters, for example, when you hear about the marine frequencies, so each one of us, we have our own frequencies. We, as amateur radio operators, we have our license permit us to operate only on the amateur radio frequencies. To go outside of that would be in violation. Yeah. So we have to keep. So if, for example, a pilot, and he's a licensed amateur radio operator, and he has amateur radio equipment on the plane, we can speak to him. He can speak to us using his call sign we using our call sign, which would be perfectly legal, because he's operating on the ham, the amateur radio frequencies that are set aside globally by the International Telecommunications Union precisely for that. So there are the ham, ham sets on history station? Mm. Yes. 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 And many yep. of the astronauts are actually yeah, ham radio operators. That's, that's correct. Yeah. That is correct. Mm. Keith, you made mention of... Um, you go outside of your license. Um, who issue these licenses? The license, and I have to add this right up front, it's not a right, it's a privilege that is issued by the government. For example, here in Anguilla, we operate under the auspices of the government of Anguilla via the telecoms officer. So if we in breach of the telecoms regulations, and we have some very strict regulations, we have brought in to the telecoms officer and found in breach, the government can revoke that license. So it's not a right, not because you're born in Anguilla, you're Anguillian. It's a privilege that is granted by the government of Anguilla through its telecoms officer. But what, what you will find is that amateur radio operators sort of self-police as well. So if, if we find that there's an operator who's operating outside of the spectrum or doing um, stuff that is against the rules and regulations, Generally speaking, we will 
um, sell police and uh, fill them up, as it were, and possibly report them if it's if it's um, uh, egregious enough to the telecoms officer. So, tell us something. What is the content of the exams? Very good question. In fact, we have, as I said, eight students who are now preparing in the final stages. Oh, right uh, one of them is right here with us, a police officer who's, who's, who's one of our, one of the members who will be very shortly sitting his license. So we teach basic electronics, basic electronics, something about basic ele electricity. We teach um, operating procedures, which is critical. How do you operate? Because you can't just walk in and start operating one of these sets just like that. There's a certain lingo, there's a certain language that we use. You have to know where to operate, what to do when you're communicating. How do you pass messages in times of emergency? There's a, some specific rules and a specific guidelines that governs this sort of information that you put out. For example, we can't pass. We are not, our license do not permit us to, to, to trade, to talk about money. Um, if, for example, I wanted to call somebody somewhere, I'll have to use a telephone. Um, you know, I can, we, there's, so there's some very strict rules, and you go outside of those, and you're in breach. No so it's, it's no politics. We religion. don't talk about race, religion. Those are no-no topics for us. We don't get into that. It's, it's not meant for that. So we, we operated under very strict conditions. Unlike some of the CD folks, they're a little more lapsed. They have a little more leeway in some places. But for hams, it's a very, very strict mean, uh, method of operation. And guidelines are clearly set out, and we follow those guidelines very strictly. So, so as far as I'm concerned, that is 7 billion 100. No, that is, that's the frequency. That's seven, 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 seven decimal, 188. Eight. That's the frequency. That's the 40, what we call the 40 meter band. Seven megahertz. Yes, seven yeah. megahertz. Seven right? And yeah. then you can go three megahertz, mm. forty megahertz, eighteen megahertz, twenty-one, twenty-four megahertz, twenty-eight megahertz, and you have even fifty mm. megahertz. Yeah. Right? But right now we're listening on the forty meter yeah. band out here. Seven megahertz band. And for Matt and um, Lloyd, the gentleman I was talking about was the Randalls had not been Randall. yes, Randall. yes, yes. Paul Randall has had a oh, hotel. Oh, beginning of Capital Luca. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that's the hotel that yes. I was referring to. Mondays Bay. So he stayed at Mondays Bay. Yeah. Yeah. The hotel had a pointed guy. Yes. So, yeah. So, yeah. Even though my so anything else for us? When Nat was a telecom officer, I was his first local. Gentleman who was a telecom officer then, Mr. Nathan, that I was the first local ham to write a license for a 1994 to write me that license. And we call it ticket. I'm not sure that I need to paid your Now, he don't know. No, we have a new telecom officer. I paid my license up to this year. <laughs> and make sure everybody, all the police, all the hands, to make sure they pay the license before they get my free from government. Mm -hmm. and make sure they pay the one and they keep every end of year to make sure that the bill is paid to the government. And Thank you. Know. Let me just add what? that we're happy to have Her Excellency joining us here. We're very, very happy that you've joined us uh, here this morning. And congratulations to you all on uh, well, I'm sure very busy day. Thank you very kindly. Thank you very much. And we'll certainly come around and give you a chance just to say a few words. Also, the Honorable Premier as well to say a few words on World Amateur Radio Day. As you see, we are live streaming. We're going to the entire world with, with today's activities. Just one of several activities happening to the over 3 million radio amateur radio operators around the world today. We also have a MOU with uh, Disaster Management that in the event we have training, we involve uh, disaster management in the trainings that we would have and also if they have trainings that they have organized that they can involve us as well and with that MOU comes also the situation that in the event of any disaster they can call on us and depend on us that we will help them to man the radios and get the communication that is uh, needed to go out that is one of the commitments that we have and there's a formal 
form that we use for that, which is called the radiogram. And this is the formal form that we write all messages. So everything is done in a formal sense so that uh, we keep proper records of the information that we have. So we will be looking at how we can assist, knowing that the 2021 hurricane season is upon us, how we can assist. We are encouraging all the hands as well to make sure the equipment is up and running and in peak conditions, and we will be doing the same as well with our friends here at the Disaster Management. Will you all be doing a drive in the schools um, to encourage the younger ones? I we, see we have a, a, a very young, interested... Yes, very, very, yeah, and we are happy to see that. We like to see them very young, and we are certainly happy that we, uh, this uh, young uh, youngster has expressed an interest, so we'll be looking forward to having him in our next um, training program. This is what we love and, and, and encourage for persons to get involved. And think about amateur radio. Age doesn't matter. You can be as young as he is, up to 100. I've spoken to the hands in the States who we talk to regularly, Robert, right? Mm -hmm. Who in the 90s up to, the other day I spoke to a guy who was 99 in Florida. A ham and he's still active, still operates his station. So age is no problem. You can go right through, doesn't matter. And we're always welcome. We're always looking for more people. The more uh, trained amateur radio operators we have, the better for us. Those of us who <laughs> need a break now, who've been in it a long time, we could do with some help. We, oh, you just don't have enough, especially in times of disaster. We just need people to mandate. Does it require, require funding, or is it self-funding? Well, we enough? pay our annual um, dues, our monthly dues, which is what, 20 EC dollars. This is what we pay um, members when we have our, we meet once a month, and we, we pay that. As I said, we are out of a clubhouse at this time, but we're happy, and I have to say that the government has been good to grant us approval of that old building, which we intend to, to repair and build a proper clubhouse, a proper safe clubhouse, a well, concrete structure with backup uh, supplies with our radio room and an area where we can do all our training. And then we have a nice tower that we see next to the building there, so we're very happy about that. It comes in, it's ideal for us to put up our antennas. So we are very happy and excited that the government has, in fact, granted um, us the approval to fix up that. With way. reference to towers, um, does the distance between towers um, strengthen the signal going up? It certainly helps. It certainly helps with the antennas having a better play um, for the signal to, to radiate. It certainly helps. And you can put a lot more equipment, a lot more antennas, different types of antennas on the system as well. Yeah. So any other questions for us? And uh, before we get the Honorable Premier and Her Excellency to say a few words for us here today, any other thing you want to share with us, ask us anything? This is your opportunity. And by the way, don't go away. We have some snacks, some refreshments in the conference room, and we'd like you to, to share with us as well. What's the cost of a basic setup? A basic setup? Uh, how much you might it want to? It depends, it depends on how much you want to spend. <laughs> <laughs> how would might be able to give us a so I, I, sales, I, but you know. I, I think Quincy was very succinct and it's extremely accurate. It really depends on your budget and nothing, you know, more than that. If you have uh, probably $200, you could end up on the air, and quite successfully, um, you know, anywhere from $400 and up, you'd be on the international short wave bands and be able to communicate all the way around the world. Um, obviously, the price goes up from there, but there, there really is no limit on either side. It, and, of course, ham radio originally, and why we were called hams, is because hams are uh, ham is actually a slang for experimenter, and and hams used to tinker, and in fact our um, forefathers invented radio, and they were the real ham radio operators. So if you were to become interested in electronics, you you could actually uh, purchase components, electronic parts. Uh, and, and build radios, and certainly you could build a radio for about $10 and communicate around the world with, with that. So, you know, that's rather intriguing, and this is the intrigue that at least sparked my interest in radio, was the ability to 
build something and communicate uh, internationally with that. And just to add to what Howard said, that in terms of hams being experimenters, we've been doing that all a long time. And in fact, and this might surprise many of you or some of you, that long before the modern telecom um, sector came about with texting, ham radio operators were texting a long time before that. Long time, we've been doing that. So part and parcel of, of this great hobby is that we're experimenters and we've been doing a lot. We've been pioneers, we've been in the forefront in terms of that technology. So long before texting became so prominent, ham radio operators were doing it. And to touch more also on the pricing, it depends whether you want to buy a brand new radio or you want to buy a used radio, because there are used radios that you can get probably for 400, 450 or whatever they sell brand new ones, probably like that one which we run you probably a thousand five hundred or something. Two, three. Uh, you know, or two, three thousand or even more. And then that is only talking about the radio. Then you would have to now invest in the antenna and your coax cable to bring the signal in and your grounding material that you need as well because your radio has to be properly grounded. Otherwise, in the event of an um, Lightning, you can find that it goes all up in smoke, you know, so it's, uh, it depends on really how much you wish to spend. So it can be a challenge, especially for young persons as well, if you have to spend that and then also have to pay import duty mm -hmm. on it. So that is one of the things that we have been looking Quincy, at. Quincy, um, well. what would you make an antenna from? Uh, it depends, again, you can actually be using, uh, making a Yagi out of uh, aluminum, aluminum rods and build that and with a ballon, or you can actually just use a wire antenna, which is number 14 or 12 gauge wire, and you get it cut to the right length, and uh, based on that, then you attach your coax cable to that, or your ladder line, and bring it into the radio itself, connect it to your PL259, and hook it up to the radio. And just before we entertain the Honorable Premier and Her Excellency, I think Randy, who's worked with us, um, all the time, Randy is a radio engineer, but he's been very helpful to the ham radio community here in Anguilla in terms of helping us with towers, helping us with repairs to our equipment. So Randy plays a very pivotal role as well in our ham radio um, community here. So we just want to recognize him as well. Um, also, you can use the mask code. You can send the mask code by, by uh, CW to send messages. If you don't want to talk, use the mask code. They use an uh, alpha tango. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those, those, are, um, those are the vibrations that you can use to send messages. If you don't want to talk, well, CW goes further than voice because it's a mask. It's a, sound. It's a yeah. sound. The tone that sends, it's a person who reads the information that you send. The person will take all the notes and then he'll send back the, he'll send back the message back to you. Yep. If so you don't want to use voice, you can use the mask code too. Okay. Yep, so Morse code is there, although it's not been used much, but we still encourage and we still encourage persons to, to learn the Morse code, or at least the basics, five words per minute. There are guys who do 50, 100 words per minute, there are guys who just go with it. But then we have the computer side and mm -hmm. the digital side of stuff. Um, so folks who might be saying, well, I'm really this old fashioned guys just talking a mic and, a, you know, but there's a whole lot of the computer side, the digital side which we are hoping to get the young people involved. So they'll be interested in the computer. And we can stay on the computers and do all sort of things, do all that kind of, co of communication as well. So it's an exciting world. Amateur radio, very exciting. And we encourage as many persons as possible, especially our young people. They want things to do, you want to get occupied. And as Howard quite rightly said, it could become a career. Engineers, persons interested in electronics, electrical area, there's so many areas. And a lot of the things we learn, well, I have learned in amateur radio, I'm able to use it in my everyday work, um, in repairing little things around the house, we learn about circuits and components, capacitors and resistors and the like. So it teaches you, it teaches you. And sometimes you can go on um, YouTube, just type in what, what the other guys did design, so then you can walk from there. Yeah. Plus you have on Google, that you can they show you how to design antennas by um, making the winding on the, the balance. They're using the, I think the, um, the 
I can't, the, I forget the, 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 the fair right, the fair yeah. right. Fair right. Um, uh, it's like a, a little ring, and you, you tie the wire, you bring the wires, you make sure the wire's flat. You put tie it up on one side, then you, you fold long and long, so you get the turns, and you, you can get diagrams. Also on, on uh, Google, shows you everything that you want. Mm. This is a lot of helpful tip. All right, so I think we can ask the Honorable Premier, Dr. Webster, to say a few words, and then we'll end out, wind up with um, comments from Her Excellency. So, Honorable Premier. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, happy Sunday to all, and happy World Amateur Radio Day. Thank uh, you. It's uh, you know, good to be here. You know, I didn't know how um, you know, intense this was. Uh, <laughs> I remember when we were 10, 11 years old, and Randy was building radios, and his mother's house, you know, and uh, he was on air. Uh, but this uh, is very organized, uh, the Anguilla Amateur Radio Society. Uh, it seems like it's a good, uh, you know, avenue for persons to get involved. But I like the, um, how you um, have interplayed with uh, disaster, because it makes it uh, where you uh, guys become, you know, uh, seconded into uh, you know the disaster management uh, during disasters, and I think that that is good to know that we always have uh, ready uh, cavalry of persons who can help uh, disaster management, help the police, and help teams to make sure that people can get connected here and outside of the borders of Anguilla. So I want to thank you for what you do and for setting up this information session. I certainly have been enlightened and learned a lot today and I hope that we can continue to support you and uh, you said government has offered you the uh, building and uh, you know and you talked about you know, free concessions we'll uh, have to take that into consideration but I think that this is providing a service for the people of Anguilla and uh, we are here to support you in every way we can and uh, you know enjoy the rest of this uh, auspicious day and certainly I wish the best for the society uh, here in Anguilla. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Premier. Excellency. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would, um, would you like to come in here? <laughs> 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 um, I was delighted actually to hear that there was um, an amateur radio day because I think it is part of what has been innovation, as um, the team was saying right from the early days, communication is an absolute lifeline. And I think over the years, the radio has been a critical part in making people in the remotest of places feel connected. And I think on the amateur radio network and having that community as well in terms of communication is I'm sure something that people absolutely depend on. So aside from it being a fascinating hobby, which I do hope inspires the next generation. It is the start, I think, of that sort of global communications and network that we're s we've taken so for granted these days with social media and all of the advancements that it has, but it still plays an incredibly important part, as will for disaster management and planning. So um, I'm, I'm, I, I wish you all um, hearted congratulations in terms of how this is being celebrated, but also a thank you as well for the public service that you do at your own discretion and um, it, it's incredibly creditable um, in terms of that. So congratulations and let's see how we can get more youngsters involved um, and seeing how we can get them involved. But I'm very much excited to see you here today as well um, as part of the celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. As I said, folks, we have some light refreshments in our back area. I'm sure Nat would like to take a picture of, yes. <laughs> of the grouping. Yeah. 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 The disaster management office um, head would like to say a few words. Thank yeah, you very just, much. Just, just want to say thank you to everyone, first, first of all. But also, there was a question earlier posed by Tim Mr. Hag regarding the HF radios. Uh, we do have two, just for clarity. So we have two radios, and actually we have two of almost everything. We have a VSAT in case our telecommunications zones. We have a BN. We have two satellite phones. These are all equipped with uh, several thousand minutes before the hurricane season, so these are pre-prepped before. Uh, we do two trainings. Uh, it's called Regional Wrap with Sedema. So we take um, a real-life uh, disaster scenario, and we take the, all the region through it, and we test each piece of equipment. 
So um, again, the, the VGANs, the VSAT, two HF antennas, the UHF, we have uh, handhelds or two, what we call the two-way radios. Uh, I'm trying not to use the term walkie-talkies. <laughs> right, now that I'm in the hand training, I, I know that now, yeah. right? So, and we can use them both at the repeater level, where I think Mr. Uh, uh, Casey would have mentioned, um, as well as on, at the simplex level. So if you have, a, for example, if you have a team that's working on the roadsides, different uh, teams working on the road for clearance and debris clearance, etc., those persons can use that set of radios at the simplex level, while you have the team also communicate via inter-team voice um, and integratedly through the, the, uh, the repeater. So uh, we're very equipped in terms of communication. You could never have enough communication just to echo the sentiments of government for them. Uh, so I just want to say a hearty thank you as well uh, for being partners with us. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just add, wearing my broadcast hat now, <laughs> <laughs> really I'm gonna, we'll be partnering with the disaster management office that in the event that we have a hurricane or some major disaster, we'll be shifting. There's actually a new studio being built here yes. that we will close Radio Anguilla and shift here and do all our communications from a new facility yep. here. That is something that Correct. is in the works. And that again yeah. shows. Yeah. And it will make it, done. yes, and it will make it seamless. So you, you have almost, well, no interruption. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, all right. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 So so thanks for everyone. <laughs> thanks for coming. As I said, we have some refreshments in the conference room. So okay, folks, room um, that has yeah. been the end of this um, demonstration of World Amateur Radio, Radio Day um, here in Anguilla, um, celebrated by some of the um, active active um, radio operators. So if we get our trainees as well, we want them to come.